So by default, files that are stored in the flash, that means uh, texts, photos, videos, they're all encrypted. So how does a phone keep your file encrypted? How does it decrypt it without uh, hackers getting in? The AES engine handles encryption and decryption in real time. The reason that there's a specialized chip for encryption and decryption is to take uh, that processing load off of the main processor. So when you open, let's say, an image or a video, that encrypted file travels from the flash storage to the AES engine, and the AES engine decrypts the file, and then it goes to the memory where you can access it. And when you create a new file, a secure enclave gives the AES engine a key. So the file travels from the memory to the engine. The engine uses the key to encrypt the file. And then the file gets stored in the flash. Now, uh, the key itself could be intercepted when it travels from the enclave to the engine. Uh, so as a result, the secure enclave and the AES engine negotiate their own key when the phone starts up. So any communication between the two is encrypted in itself. So if we look at the flash storage on the phone, uh, let's pretend we have only one file which is encrypted with the file key. It's a unique key. Every file has its own unique file key. Every file key is encrypted with a class key. And then the metadata is stored with the encrypted file key. And together, the metadata, such as the date, the time, the file name, uh, those are all encrypted with the iOS file system key. There's only one iOS file system key for the entire phone. So if we look at a typical phone, there are hundreds of thousands of encrypted files. Every file is encrypted with its own unique file key. And every file key is encrypted with a class key and stored with metadata which is then encrypted with the iOS key. So again, every file key is encrypted with a class key. And there's actually four different class keys. So depending on how secure the file needs to be, uh, the file key is encrypted with one of four different class keys. So there's hundreds of thousands of files, and there's hundreds of thousands of file keys but there's only four class keys and there's only one file system key and the file system key is created when iOS is first installed so it's created at the factory uh, if your phone gets messed up and you reinstall iOS then a new file system key is generated and the advantage of this is if you wanted to wipe the entire phone, all you need to do is delete the file system key. Uh, once you've deleted the file system key, all of the file keys become inaccessible because they can no longer be decrypted. So again, there's four different types of class keys and we're going to look at why there's four different types. So before we do that, uh, let's look at the secure enclave. As I said earlier, the secure enclave has a unique ID and it is the only chip that knows what the unique ID is. And then we also have the user selected passcode. And the passcode and the unique ID are tangled together so that you can't decrypt the phone without decrypting the passcode on the phone and this is enforced uh, with a t 
timer the timer forces you to wait between uh, entries of the passcode and it does that by calculating a mathematical operation inside the secure enclave which cannot be bypassed uh, in previous versions of the iPhone like the iPhone 5c the mathematical operation was built into iOS and a professor found a way to uh, subvert that operation uh, it's no longer possible as far as anybody knows there's four different class keys the first one is called complete protection the second one is protected unless open the third one is protected until first user authentication and the fourth one is no protection so if a class key encrypts a file key as we saw before and the file system key encrypts the metadata and the encrypted file key what encrypts a class key and the answer is the passcode combined with the user id and this takes place inside the secure enclave so looking at the complete protection class key so what we know is the key is decrypted when the phone is unlocked and the decrypted version of the key is deleted when the phone is locked or within 10 seconds of locking the phone uh, that key is deleted it's no longer available to uh, decrypt any files and again you need the passcode and the unique ID of the phone to unlock the pat to unlock the key and the unique ID is kept in a secure enclave. So again, we have a file key. A file key encrypts a file, and the file key is protected by the class key. The complete protection class key is designed for the files that need to be the most secure. Uh, something like an email it's a very secure file on the iPhone now sometimes you have a situation where the phone needs to access a file but the phone is locked let's say you download a uh, a file from Safari or you're downloading a very big attachment and you lock your phone that attachment needs to continue uh, downloading in the background uh, and the way that that happens uh, is those files are protected with the second type of class key uh, which actually has two keys there's a main class key and then which is protected with the passcode and the UID and again this is used to protect the file key and then for every file that needs to be accessed a second key which is created with elliptical curve cryptography is stored next to the file key in the metadata and that key allows the phone to access the file even when locked so with protected until first authentication the key is decrypted when the phone is unlocked typically when you first turn it on and the decrypted keys are not deleted when you lock your phone they're only deleted when you restart the phone again they're protected with the passcode and the UID uh, so they're tied to the secure enclave and again the class key is used to encrypt the file key and then we have the uh, keys for the no protection class uh, even though it's called no protection uh, these files are still encrypted the only difference is that the user passcode uh, does not need to be entered in order to decrypt one, this class key the only thing that protects this class key is a UID uh, a lot of files and user data on the iPhone are only protected with the no protection key and again 
the null protection class key encrypts a file key which encrypts a file. Now if you have a whole bunch of apps on your phone, uh, these apps each generate their own key. So Facebook for example, it's got some secret keys uh, that it uses to authenticate your phone with the server. Uh, so when you open the app, you don't have to sign in every single time, for example. And the reason is those keys generated by those apps get stored in the keychain. And the keychain is basically an SQL light uh, database that sits on the phone. Uh, but individual entries in the keychain have their own level of encryption. So we know that we have four class keys which protect the file keys and we know that the class keys are encrypted but where are the class keys stored? So the encrypted keys sit in a key bag on the phone. Uh, when you back your phone up through iTunes you have two choices. An encrypted backup where you choose a password in iTunes or no encrypted backup. If you choose to encrypt your iTunes backup, then your class keys are encrypted without the unique ID and passed to the iTunes, which means you can move them to another phone. Uh, but if you don't use the iTunes password and you have an unencrypted backup, then the class keys are tied to the UID and that means they're tied to the device and the backup can only be restored back to the same device. And there's also what's called an escrow key bag and the escrow key bag contains the same class keys as the main key bag uh, but it's used to allow your phone to sync with iTunes. And what happens is uh, you, when you connect your phone to iTunes it generates another key to encrypt the key bag and then the keys and the key bag are split in half and half of the key bag and half of the encryption key stay on the phone and half stay in iTunes 